I hope you're all doing well. So today I'm going to talk about, you know, how we did on the 80s about some fashion icons. So we're going to talk about the 90s fashion icons, which is quite a different case than it was in the 80s. So there were many individuals that had like a unique style, but in the 90s it wasn't so much. It was more of a groups. You had like the goth group that were all in black and with a very huge eyeliner. You had the grunge group. You had the pop stars with the crop tops and um, the buggy trousers. So it was more groups and communities that had a certain style rather than one individual. But today I'm going to cover that phenomenon that is all about supermodels. So up till then, there was a supermodel that was just a model, not a supermodel. That was a kind of a term that was invented in the 90s. So we had the top model in a cover of a magazine. No one will actually know their names or anything like that. They might sometimes, but it was actually, especially in the 80s, they weren't celebrities in themselves. So in the 90s, things have changed. So models weren't just models anymore. They were celebrities and big time celebrities. They were getting paid a lot of money. Uh, everyone knew them with their um, uh, first name and they decided to kind of move into movies or television or even create um, their own ventures. And kind of, I think they opened a cafe in New York and all of that. So I'm gonna go through the, more, the biggest names because there were quite a few. And there was also, I think quite, a moment was when they participated in the video clip of George Michael Freedom. So he is not in the video and they're not kind of just a model hanging around. They're actually kind of lip syncing the song. So that was a critical moment, which made them like kind of <laughs> put them in the star, big stardom and they became celebrities. So now we all know, like in the Vagelista and Naomi Campbell and Cindy Crawford, they were huge names at the time. I wouldn't actually say they, I don't know, started a trend or anything like that. It, it was part of the trends that we were following anyway at that moment, at that time. It's just, it was all of them. Oh, they're so skinny and they're looking amazing and their sleek hair and all of that, which kind of added pressure to the rest of us. But yeah, it was very upset. We were all very obsessed with them. So I just gathered some pictures to remind you of all these ladies who, of course, they were amazingly beautiful. Don't get me wrong, but definitely it, it kind of made you feel sometimes that, oh, I don't look like Cindy Crawford, so probably I am fat and I need to lose weight or whatever. And I remember I had that issue when I was size eight. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm not size four, but I'm not size six, I'm not size zero or whatever. So it kind of adds pressure to any, everyone else, which is not now like I see them now and I know they're amazing women, very beautiful, but they are models and they, this is their job to kind of you know, maintain their appearance and their image. Anyway, let me share my screen and kind of walk down to the memory lane. So here we are. So this is quite iconic picture when I saw it, I'm like, yes, I remember that. So this is Cindy Crawford. I think she was the biggest name of all at that time. And because she kind of moved quite easily she had a show on MTV, as far as I remember. And she mm -hmm. actually uh, starred in a movie, not just a small role. She was the first name there. She wasn't good, but that, <laughs> that's a different story. So this is from a commercial for Pepsi. This is quite an iconic look, the pair of jeans and just a white vest on top, which was, we were all wearing it in the 90s. Um, I have Tyra here, but I think Tyra wasn't uh, in the first bunch of the big top models. I think she came later. And I remember that she said that Naomi Campbell felt threatened by her. Um, I think they're both amazing. Why would someone feel threatened? But yeah, at that, um, on those times, I don't think there were many black models. 
on the runways. So yeah, I guess that's why the arrival was on. So this here, these are Naomi Cabell, Elle McPherson, I see there, Claudia Schiffer and Christy Tellington. Those four ladies, they decided to open uh, the Fashion Cafe in New York, kind of to prove to us that, yeah, we're not just good looks. We are entrepreneurs and we can open a cafe, but that didn't go very well. And after a while, yeah, they kind of uh, distant themselves from it. But I'm not sure if it's still exist in might but yeah they're not involved in any way anymore uh, let me see who else yeah Chrissy Tellington was my favorite I think because she had the more slick and slim uh, characteristics from everyone else and I thought she was amazing and very untainable like I could never be like her and yeah I, I think she was my favorite and she even looks great now this is Carla Bruni, you see here, she married uh, the president of France. He's no longer president, but she, uh, he was at that time that they got married. So basically she became first lady, woohoo. You can see El, um, yeah, Carla Bruni here. And, and yeah, Elle McPherson, they used to call her the body because you can see the body here, like she was, very athletic and very yeah and everyone was calling her the body not that the rest of them didn't have nice bodies but yeah well and of course we have Kate Moss she came up kind of came into the picture a few years later and she was a very controversial model in terms of she was not as tall as the others and she was extremely skinny and that's how the heroin chic term started because she looked like she was on herring or whatever which was totally and utterly stupid but yeah in the 90s um Kate Moss was definitely not your typical model the tall one with very like um characteristics on the face quite like statement ones she was very very petite in terms of what the other was one were and her yeah her characteristics were quite common that's how we used to say it but I think yes and after a while she had the scandals with drugs and all of that but I think her style through the years is definitely iconic and she kind of moved away from that picture that we had in the 90s Naomi Campbell what can I say about Naomi Campbell like she is the glamazon we used to call her and yeah i don't think she's aged one bit yeah you can see here cd crawford yeah i found this one which is from mtv she was uh, presenting and i think she even had her own show this is quite iconic um the those bodycon dresses short bodycon dresses were really in at that era especially Alaya Drace, Isadine Alaya, he was a designer that everyone loved in the 90s and he still, well he's, he's not leaving, he's, he's dead, but the brand still exists and they do really nice things. So yeah, you can see here, uh, again it's Kate Moss, I think, Christy Tellington and Naomi, this is Christy Tellington, yeah, I kind of a crush on her a girl crush on her so yeah let me know if you remember the whole supermodel era and if someone was standing out but I remember like I was watching them in awe and I think many girls at that time and um, we do have supermodels today but not as big as they were then then they were huge celebrities uh, nothing like in comparison now like we we do have like Cara Delevingne and uh, Kendall Jenner and Kaya Gerber but they haven't been as huge as in the 90s it was a whole era of models who were just beyond fashion and they did something like huge like Tyra Banks has you know America's um, top model and uh, many people like did so much more than just modeling at that time and of course they were <laughs> incredibly rich so yes let me know if you remember that era if you like someone in particular and um, someone that you liked and you were like oh yeah she's pretty and whatever or you remember any funny stories uh, of that time so yeah and I will talk to you very very soon bye bye